sticking out of the ground. So I cheated. It's okay, chat. It's okay to cheat sometimes. I need my uh, desk prophylactic. Covers up my brushes. I don't spray all my brushes. Do a light coat of black real quick. As we do, just to start getting some tooth on the model. If I were smart, I would grab my unused uh, top here and put them on this, and then I don't know where my handle is. Oh, there's my handle. No, that's not my handle. We're going to take him and stick him on this bad boy real quick. Oh, but of course he has like an indention on it, so that's not going to work as well as I thought it would. Damn it. There's always something. Where is the actual... Ah, there it is. There it is. Got to spread it out to the edges so we can actually stick him down on it. Put him down on the poster tack real quick. Our other... Resin Stormcast dude was on there. There we go. Now, look at me, a professional. I can spray the sword without spraying my hands. Look at the big brain on bread. At any time you're priming, not just with our primer, but any primer, try not to just slam the primer on the model. Do a light pass, semi-opaque. You're not thinning the primer at all. You're just not pulling the trigger back very far. You're just not putting much paint out there. We call this feathering paint on the model. And as you feather that paint, you'll just kind of start building up a slight grayish tone, even with the black primer here across all the surfaces and this gives us what we call tooth the tooth is what allows the other paint to grab onto the model better than the uh, bare plastic allows once that's on there then your second coat you start going for fill right not new guy fill f-i-l-l -L, not p-h-i-l start filling in all the spots with solid primer now that first coat gives us the ability to lock the paint on the plastic and the second coat gives us the actual coverage that first coat will start to set up and dry so quickly that you don't have to wait in between them either you can if you notice that it's still tacky or you want to go make a sandwich or whatever you're doing. T. Schmidt, what's going on? Mo, what's happening? These models are very hate-esque. At least this guy is. I do not like brightly colored resins and plastics. It gives us a uh, kind of an undertone of red here, which isn't horrible for this guy, but I just don't like them. Gray, something neutral. I know that these games that are more built towards, you know, the, the playability of the game as well as the hobby of it, I guess, is the way to put that, right? It's more of a board game-esque kind of thing. And in being so, having the characters be pre-colored for people that don't understand the hobby side is probably a cool thing, right? You just, my red dudes versus your blue dudes, or whatever it is, right? 
but for the hobby side, it's like, can I get these in gray, please? Please, fine, sir. I think that what Hate did, Cool Mini or Not with Hate, I think was the best way to do this. They put the minis, you know, all these have to be connected to a base at some point, whether it's glued at the factory or glued by you. And uh, the Hate ones had the, uh, the base a different color. So the base would be like bright green or whatever it was. But the model was still gray on those. I think that's a much better way to do this whole, you need your models to have a color for the new player rather than coloring the whole model in the plastic color. But hey, not my circus, not my monkeys. I just got to paint it. Well, I don't even have to paint it. But I want to paint it. I just don't like that in any areas we miss now, <laughs> they'll be bright red. We got to do extra diligent priming here. And no matter what I do, we'll always be running across areas where it's like, oh, look, guys, red. Red plastic. Especially the more complicated the model is. You know, look at it from every angle. Get every little pocket and crevice. Under the chin, eye sockets. Gray just doesn't stick out like a sore thumb like the colored plastic will, but we shall persevere. Make it work. Quit your bitchin' fuse. Jeez, just paint the models. Oh, that's okay. Obviously not worried about the rim of the base because that's where I stick my fingers while I paint. There and up my nose. Best places for your fingers. Dunzos. And used a pulp print. I thought, well, we're going to keep this out. We might do some other, some more airbrush, a brush, maybe. Possibly. Little Potter, what is going on, man? Good to see you, Eric. How you doing? Bring out the clean your airbrush tub. This tub is, is an amazing am amalgam of gross because it's in Arizona, it fills up and then it evaporates. <laughs> you never have to empty it. It's amazing how dry weather works. <laughs> Cold and dry, evaporation accelerated. Watch the magic. But it leaves behind the gross nonsense, right? It's a good science project. You got a kid. Right? Doing science fair. Needs a science project. Here's one. Let's find some sort of evaporation story to tell. Evaporating solids out of liquid components or liquid uh, suspension. There you go. And then just give your kid your uh, airbrush clean out tub. Right? There I'm going with this. 
cheap and easy A's in science. I don't know if you get an A. I don't promise anything like that. But. You might get a D, but at least you participated. I hear it's the age of, you know, A for effort, right? Yep, we are, Eric. Racking your brain at work. What? You don't have to think at your job. Eric is a babysitter for reptiles, mostly snakes. Um, and so while he'll tell you that his job requires a lot of interactivity and, you know, critical thought. I mean, come on. How much attention does a snake really need? To peel your dry palate clean? Yeah, exactly. You just, like, get a razor blade and dunzos. Finished. All right. Got that clean enough. I'm gonna run some white primer through it real quick. Do a little pre-highlighting here. Ever been butt by a snake? It's not as fun as it seems. Uh, I've been bitten by non-venomous snakes. I have never been bitten by like a rattlesnake or anything like that. Close. I had a rattlesnake hit my boot once, but it did not puncture through my leather boot. All right, so no thinning of the primer, only uh, enough to uh, whatever water was left in there after cleaning, because the white primer doesn't have to act like a primer. It just needs to really be a uh, um, a, a, type, a paint, like, like a regular paint. I think I kind of want to... Oh, man, even though he's looking off to his right, I think we kind of want to have... I don't know what we want to do here. He's kind of a good face for like under lighting right with his horizontal jawbone sword that he's got i'm wondering if maybe that's what we do with him huh ah i wasn't thinking about that nah nah because this part of the body is going to be really hard to do that way I think we do this. All right. Get all those details out of there nice and neat. The underside here is going to be super dark because we just don't have a whole lot of... Uh, Parts and pieces hanging out. His stance kicks his legs back pretty far. Again, just feathering the paint. I'm barely at that part of the airbrush where, you know, we say paint, no paint. Right? So that I'm not getting a... a super constant opaque spray going here just a feathering light dusting if you will because you know the white primer is freaking fully opaque but we're not trying to do that here but i'm showing you that you know we do this a lot on stream where i say just give it a light dusting and that is how you by using your uh, trigger control don't have to worry about thinning as much. Once you get to a point where you're comfortable like this, then you can just ride that very fine line, use distance to the model. You notice I'm about four to six inches away from the model as I'm doing this. Just to give that gray pass so that I get enough light interacting on the model to get us going. Don't want to leave anything pure black if I can avoid it. So even on this side that's away from our pseudo light here, I'm going to go ahead and just punch a little bit in there. Again, just barely pressing on the trigger is how you do that. Right. We're not getting any speckling or anything crazy like that. Our white primer is great for doing this, just like our 
titanium white or our transparent white, all of our whites give you a ton of capability. Now that we've done that, we've got a pretty good punch of what we'll call gray on everything, even though we're using white paint. Now we'll go back to our lighting direction and we'll push the button a little harder, pull it back a little further across the shoulders here, head, shoulders, and then pull back, pull the trigger more as we start focusing on feet and top of hands. Right? And so now we brighten up that upper portion of his body right, without interrupting too much of our gray. Sure you do the same on the back, assuming that's how your lighting is working in your head. And I'm gonna get the top of the jawbone sword a little bit heavier as well. So skull I'm not as worried about, but we can go ahead and hit the skull out here too. I think this is a pretty good lighting layout on him. Bunch a little bit more gray onto this other side of his head. Again, not wanting anything to be in pure darkness. Let the angle of the model direct traffic. I can't get paint where I can't see. So if I shoot straight down on him like that, there's only a certain amount of areas that can get brighter. That's what we'll do. Like so. That's pretty good. Kansas was full of rattlesnakes. Colorado had a bunch. I've been all over the place. Seems like rattlesnakes can kind of be everywhere. <laughs> he said, did you say insurance salesmen can be snakes? <laughs> insurance places are snakes. Been learning about lighting for photography. You need to paint many so they look like they have a key light. Yeah, so there's a lot of terms for all of that, right? So the um, the ability to do single, double, triple light source stuff when setting up a uh, a camera scene is really about creating the idea of diffuse lighting in a space, right? A more natural light, because in a lot of those um, you know staged setups for shooting, or even if you're outside, right, you might not have the uh, ability to generate light from all the directions for the time of day or the scene that you're trying to set. So you'll use uh, reflectors and things like that to get like halo lighting, right? The What we call a key light would be the, the, I guess the main light that everything else keys off of. Perhaps that's why it's called a key light. I don't really know the naming convention of why it's called that. But, um, you know, the main source of light that brightens up a face in general, right? And then you can have secondary lights in behind that kind of create a halo around the top of the head or a, uh, a secondary light that gives a, a little bit of a dimmer, diffuse lighting to the other side of the face. Maybe it's warmer, or cooler. We do a lot of that with effects. But yeah, some of that can cause some really neat dramatic scenes to occur in your composition, whether you know, airbrushing, brushing, just taking photographs, whatever. All right, I think that's going to be all we're going to airbrush for the moment. Probably should have shot some color on him if I wanted, like, a a shadow on everything but he doesn't have like any one um material that really 
makes sense. Like a lot of times I would take a model and I would do like a purple shadow on it. But he's got pants and boots and, you know, it's not like a whole lot of skin showing or anything like that. So I think we just paint it all. I don't think a cohesive, like, you know, general shadow on him makes that big of a difference. Maybe. Maybe we could do it. What do we think? I guess we got to figure what color we're really wanting to do all of his uh, parts and pieces anyway. do like a green like a green shadow across the whole model do some transparent green like there's a really heavy green shadow on everything be kind of neat tie it all together try that let's kick the airbrush back on let's just play i didn't really start with a plan so, uh, but let's pick some other colors for like what we want to do with his skin and such. I'm thinking kind of a uh, a yellowy flesh color would be neat. We haven't done that in a long time. We've done a bunch of orange and regular skin tones and things like that, but maybe like a yellowy orc flesh. The green would work really well with that. Blue would also work really well with that and give us some green off of the interaction with the yellow. But a straight green shadow on everything might be really bitchin'. But blue shadow on everything would be really bitchin' too. Oh my. What do we think, chat? Green or blue? Those are your choices. Green or blue shadow? Houdini, what's going on, man? What, Tom and Tom, what's happening? All the snakes in your area reside in a place called upper management. <laughs> Teachman says green. All right, let's do green. I'm just going to do green transparent. Pow. Green. Very, very green. And we're just going to do it straight, man. We're not even going to mess around. We're just going to do green transparent in the airbrush. No thinning. Act like you know. Boom. Green. I think I'm out of green transparent. <laughs> this is maybe a bad idea. This might have been a bad idea. Let's see if we can pour some out. See if we've see if we've got some in the bottle. If we could do this without getting the agitator, that would be a, a key component of this whole thing. Well, I mean, <laughs> hey, Ruben, you got any transparent green over there? This is this transparent green? That's not transparent green. Thank you, sir. It doesn't have 75 agitators in it. Well, what good is it? <laughs> Thank you, sir. This is a non-stock bottle. Awesome. I didn't even have to steal it from potential customers. There's something magically wrong with this. We will find out as we paint with it. <laughs> All right. Back in business. It's almost like we work for a paint company. So anyway, rewind. Transparent green sounds like a good color to do, guys. Let's try some of that. Look at how easily it flows from the bottle. <laughs> Get best brush and dip it in there. That bottle was done. Dunzos, man, done. Need my desk prophylactic again. All right, here we go. Again, I want a really harsh angle to the model. I'm going to shade everything with this, too, not just the skin or anything. We'll do something a little different here and create a 
unified shadow color across the whole model. Loads O green. And the steepest I get with my angle is maybe 15 degrees to the model, maybe. Obviously, it'll be a little steeper where the knee bends in, so that'll be mostly green there. Right. But to give you an idea, see if I can make the camera see how I'm doing it. I'm spraying like this. So what is that, 15, 30 degrees, maybe, to the model, max? Again, just feathering the trigger in there. Obviously, using the transparent will let the white interact with it quite well. Although, in a perfect world, we'd have done this first and then come back and done the white second. We might have to touch it up with white, depending on how good I get all this on here. Ooh, hey, that looks really good us. on that cloak already. Digging it. Thank you for that follow. Need to get the back of his head. So I do have to rotate the model a little bit towards us. Holding the brush back quite a bit. Right, so I'm not oversaturating that area too much, but I do want to get that portion of his head and neck, those horns. And rotate it around, make sure I've got Pretty good coverage up underneath in the darkest grays and blacks of our pre-highlight. Make sure we get his forehead and under his eye sockets. He's a very serious taker of skulls here. That shoulder pad area up in there has like a jawbone. All right, looks pretty good. Now, truth, moment of truth. All right. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. We got to go in and do some manual touch ups, obviously, the neck area. Here, I got to just get in real close. Stuff that I can't really make happen from down low. Got to get in, get the horns around the neck. Area on his face over on this side. Again, this stuff up in here. Dark in the back of his head a little bit. This would be a lot easier for you to do by, um, and, and I guess I could show you how that would work, right? If we do more green, if I kind of fire some green lightly over even the top kind of coloring here. I'm not going to turn him completely green like we did with the shadow color, but if I fire some up into the whites... Just give us kind of a mint coloring across everything, almost. Had we thought about doing the green shadow first, we would have painted the whole model green, green transparent, and then uh, do the white over the top of that. So we'll do that now. I can show you how you would attack that. I'm not going to paint it all solid green, but you would have initially. Prime it dark, paint it with the dark green, then do the white over the top. 
or be like me and not know what the hell colors you want to use until after you've done a color that you got to cover up. That's okay too. Remember that in the process of painting, like the, you know, the paint by numbers, if you will, you kind of want to paint your shadows first and then start adding highlights on top of shadows rather than vice versa. Adding shadow color on top of highlights um, can wind up where you have, you know, paint starting and stopping well, in a way that makes it look like your shadows are painted on instead of just being the lack of color delight. that they should be. Red eyed, what is going on? Thank you for that prime sub. And the four months. Welcome back. Who did he says he knows a place where I can get some transparent green? Thank you for that. I'm glad to have such good friends that let me know these things. <laughs> I keep washing my, my airbrush out into my actual paint cup. This does not do me any good at all. Stop being lazy bastard, Fuse. Stop being lazy bastard. Now we'll just come back with the white again, same way we did before. Except now we'll get a much more natural interaction between the white highlight color and our green because the light is actually falling on top of the shadow, which is the way the world works, not vice versa. Say. Back of the calves there. We don't want to get the back of the thighs because they go underneath the body and ni nice good shading there. I want to catch the folds in the cloak again though. And then really punch up the shoulder, top of the head area, chest, skull on his belt, top of this blade just kind of right through here. Now we're kind of set better for some success here. I want to get these bones and stuff up underneath. So again, just kind of cheat the angle. Just a little bit. And that works pretty well. Now we're where we need to be. Got a Good green shadow on everything. Nice highlight setup. Now, if I remember right, I'll clean my airbrush in the right tub. This one. What is Wad Tomaton asking? Not styrofoam. Oh, are you making sprugu? I see it up top. Doing uh, chemistry class 101. <laughs> Just mix it in a well ventilated area. Don't put forks in the microwave.
I'm tempted on this guy to use the wash medium and transparent paints or the wash medium and all of our paints and paint him that way. What do you think? Now that we've got the green set up on there with the pre-highlight, it kind of makes it to where we could get away with that. We could just use our new wash medium and then it's then I could write it off as a business expense. <laughs> Oh, mixing glues. Last thing before you think your airbrush is clean, always give the needle just a quick squib. Make sure you don't have any dried paint sitting on it. Bingo. Throw that away. Put that away. Uh, yeah. That away. Model. model ah very good just like that not too chevy yeah i'm thinking the washes might be really fun guys we have a wash medium for those of you that do not know we have a wash medium coming out and i'm almost tempted to do the uh the wash medium with our opaque and transparent paints and just paint him that way very contrasty style. What do you think? Let's do it. Let's do it. I think we can make we can make this happen. So let's get a bunch of mixing cups. We have a lot. Let's make some colors. Right? We know we need a flesh. Right? BTD Customs, what type of paints do you use for these acrylics? We make them. We are Monument Hobbies. So we make an entire line of acrylic paints called Pro Acryl. Right? They're water-based acrylics. Come in a variety of colors. And we paint all sorts of stuff with them. So, well, I say all sorts of stuff. Mostly plastic and resin, dudes, dudettes, and monsters that uh, we did. So this is the latest project we've been working on is this diorama with big, giant robot, power pole, some crows on a wire, right? And all sorts of nifty stuff going on. So all done with our acrylic paints. Exclamation point store in chat. You too can paint with our amazing paints. And today we're working on a model from Steamforge Games for a game called God Tier. I'm going to put some of our wash medium. And some cups. We're going to make some colors and play around today. It may be a complete catastrophe, but we do it live so that you guys can make fun of us. There you go. All right, so there's three cups with some color in them. And let's make a flesh one first. It can be kind of a low yield color, so we don't have to have a lot of wash medium here. And I'm thinking. I'm thinking dark golden brown, actually, since I wanted to do kind of a yellowish flesh. Just getting into resin casting. Nice, nice. And dioramas, awesome. Well, welcome. Glad to see you. So I'm just going to take wash medium and boom, drop a driplet, droplet of dark golden brown in there. Just one to start here, right? And then we'll... Mix that around. Just one drop of paint to our wash medium is perfect. That's like, you know, 90% medium. One drop of paint because we're using an opaque paint there, right? Um, if we were using a uh, transparent paint, you could put more transparent in it. And then I need a little bit of water. A hair. Mix that all up. Hey, somebody likes us. That may be a little thin. We'll see. We'll paint it on there and see. See what we think. Garani, thank you so much. Let's get a numero four. And let's just see what we get. Let's just have some fun. Let's just have some fun, gang. Let's uh, start on the hands. May, it may be way too thin. Not have to see. That's pretty thin. Let's go with it. Let's see what we get. 
like the way it works with the green. That's too thin. I need more paint in it. But two drops. Two drops of paint. That's much better. It's much, much better. Having some fun today. We'll play around with our new wash medium with the opaque paints and see if we can't come up with some neat colors and methods for getting paint on a model real quick that looks good. Making sure not to overload the brush because I'm not trying to do sloppy wash placement here. Treating it like a real paint. It does allow me to just kind of poke it around into the recesses and such. And let the wash medium handle the rest of moving it around. That gives us a neat yellowish orc flesh with that green, like instantaneously. Not mad at that at all. Not adding water to the brush either. I'm just going straight onto the model, straight into the paint and straight onto the model. Cheating chat. Don't tell nobody. When does the medium get really hail the horrors? Like, oh my God, when does this stuff come out? Um, yeah, like everybody's saying, not soon enough. Probably March we're looking at right now. Uh, expansion set four comes out later this month, and then I'm hoping, whoop, he's about to fall off the base here. Uh, expansion set four later in February, early March, and then hopefully washes very soon after that. We will have... Um, Three premix colors, uh, those being black. Move that around up on the top of his head where I let it dry a little bit. Um, black, brown, and flesh tone we will be doing.
and then the medium. And the medium will come in 120 mil bottles. So that you get plenty to work with. And as you can see, it works fantastic with just our uh, opaque paints. I'm doing a second layer to get a little bit more of the yellow on there. Because that dark golden brown has a, just a tremendous richness to it. And just like when you're glazing with anything, you notice how I started with dark golden brown, even though I know I'm going to get a much brighter color. So if you're not familiar with the filtering techniques of acrylics or oils or anything, um, you've got to make sure that as you are applying a filter, like a wash or a glaze, you start with a darker color than you're actually looking to have at the end of the day. Because by thinning, uh, putting over a lighter surface like this white pre-highlighted area that we've got, you're going to brighten that color up. So if you go with, like, if, if I want a golden brown, which is what I'm getting here, right, then I would, uh, and I started with golden brown paint instead of dark golden brown, I'm going to move that up a little bit. Um, then I would be in trouble because the golden brown would turn to almost a pure yellow as opposed to giving us this rich kind of golden color that we're looking for. Yeah, chat, we're going to have a lot of fun with this. We have not used the wash medium to play like this yet. But I think as we're seeing here, live and in person, it's working pretty good. That's exactly the coloring I had planned for him, minus the green shadow. I think that was a good idea, though. Well, huzzah, huzzah. I'll just throw back my legs <laughs> and pollute my britches with delight. Tell you're horrible. You're horrible. Letters from the multiverse. I want to tell you, I did color mixing with PA Paints yesterday, and it's a dream. It's the first time in so long you wanted to play with color for my minis. That is awesome. Thank you so much, Letters from the Multiverse. That's what the paints are all about, right? Um, it's meant to get you into the creative space of just wanting to play, you know, just paint. What does that mean? It means different things to different people, right? I'm painting an army. I'm painting a display mini. I'm doing whatever. But with our paints, you feel like you can do anything, right? Sky's the limit. What do you want to create today? Go for it. The answer is yes. Our paints will do it with you. Right. So we've maintained all of our value there. Got a good... Skin color going. I love the back of the head there, that green on there. I think I missed a little bit right behind the ear there where the mold line grabbed it. That looks like it's supposed to be neck now that it comes out. If I'm looking here, right, we have what looks like neck muscles. And then this is, I think, skin right here. I think we just have a seam where the model's head glued on, maybe. And that it's not supposed to be a collar. I had it figured as a collar, but I think we're going to have to do it as skin.
because of the front view, right? It looks like his neck doesn't look like a collar necessarily, and then it comes around. I guess we could paint it like a collar and just paint this area down here as part of it. Although right now, that looks like it's supposed to be bare neck. I think we just go with the fact that it's a bad join on the model. Call it a day. But letters, thank you so much for uh, stopping in and saying that. We get the biggest kick out of people enjoying the products and more so when their enjoyment leads to more creativity, more painting, more fun with models, all that good stuff. There's nothing better than getting excited about your hobby, whatever that hobby is. And if it can be because of a product, awesome. It can be because of a really cool model, awesome. Notice how I'm being able to get this very precise. Our medium, even though I thinned it out, I, I probably shouldn't have uh, thinned out as much with water as I did. Um, but even with as much water as I added to the concoction, it's still going and flowing pretty well. But our medium for washing is made to stay where you put it. Gravity will pull it into crevices, but you can move it around, right? So I can paint with it, right? Like I can get fingers without leaving a big old stain of color around the fingers like a normal wash would as it kind of, you know, like, like spilling on uh, an absorbent surface and it just kind of bleeds out. Normal washes just kind of bleed like that. He has like a leather wrap on the palm of his hand, so. Armin's, thank you for that prime sub. 40 months. Creepy says, I can't wait for the wash meeting to come out. Your dad uh, is interested in doing some bolt action minis because he wants to play. And with all his chemo and stuff he's gone through, he's really shaky. So the wash, the wash will be nice. Yeah, for getting like big base coats and stuff on, I feel like you don't have to be. I, here I am talking about how you can use the, the wash to do more detail work. But yeah, I mean, the reverse is true, right? It just, it also spreads on the model and gives you a really solid base coat real quick. And as you see here, if you're underpaint, is like this with the transparent green, you know, and uh, or any color, right? This could have been purple, red, whatever. Um, and then a quick pre-highlight of white, and boom, you're set, right? Your model's set for perfection. And then we just put color on. And in no time, we have really good-looking skin. I mean, that's really good-looking skin. Yeah, I think people are going to be absolutely floored with the ability to do whatever colors you want from our opaque and transparent lines with the wash medium. Like I said, this is opaque paint that we're using here um, mixed with our wash medium. This is dark golden brown, just a normal color out of our expansion set three. No transparents, no gimmicks. This was, uh, what did we wind up doing on here? This is maybe four drops of paint to maybe 12 drops of wash would be my, my first guess, you know? So like a three to one wash medium to color when using the opaques. The transparency, you can get away with a lot more color like we talked about. But yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, I, heck, man, that's amazing. You don't really have to do anything else to the skin. We're going to, but there's no need to. That's pretty damn good all on its own.
deltoid back here. Think there's any other tears in his jeans, just that knee. I think that's all the skin. Fingers back here, I guess. Step one done, success. Right? There you go. We took about that much wash medium and do some paint and water in it. Boom. Done. And I put too much water in it. I'm still playing around with the, uh, the right mix in my head to get the opacity I want with the opaque colors. But that's pretty good. And again, that's just dark golden brown. You'd never know it, though. Right? Like if you went and told somebody, yeah, I painted this with green transparent and dark golden brown, they would laugh at you. <laughs> but that's what we did. That is the color we just used. And through the miracle of altering the opacity via the wash and then the pre-highlight with the white and the shadow with the green, we get a tremendous skin tone out of that. Yeah, neutral gray and warm gray. Hail, like Creepy said. Yep. Neutral gray and warm gray. The new colors for expansion set four in total, um, if I just run through them real quick, are, uh, let me set him where he's not going to be in paint. Um, blah, 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 blah. It starts with khaki, uh, right? And wherever I put khaki. Where did I put khaki? Khaki? Khaki. Finally, khaki. Okay. Uh, and then we've got yellow green. which is a darker version, of course, of bright yellow-green. A lot of tints and shades in this one. Uh, faded green, which we do not have a, uh, um analog to in the line so far, uh, but it will go great with the camos, right, as an additive to those when doing military-style stuff or just a great tint for all sorts of colors. Right? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Bright jade. So, bright jade to go with, of course, jade. Uh, then we get into the new reds, which uh, dark flesh. Unfortunately, I gave the actual real bottle of dark flesh away. We have dark flesh. Uh, so you can see it next to like a tan flesh. Fantastic color. I think we'll find people using an absolute crap ton of this. Not quite into the orange range of uh, burnt sienna, but works really well as an even darker burnt sienna, right? But then gets you into flesh tones because it has that pinkishness to it rather than so much orange. Uh, and then burgundy. Again, a really good addition to our reds. Burnt red and burgundy. You can see we just have a lot more of the bluish tones in there. It's a cool, much cooler red. Great shader be able to lift out of it uh, with purples and pinks and stuff like that to get a lot of really cool colors. Uh, plum. Pink. Just a true center of the road pink. We've got pale pink here too. Then warm yellow. So much, I, I don't want to say a much oranger yellow, but a yellow that falls in between orange and golden yellow. Right. Warm flesh. Great color for highlighting flesh tones when you have like, uh, you know, a sunny reflection or glow that you want to give to them. Uh, or again, just a great mixer for all of your yellows. Uh, already showed you khaki and then neutral and warm gray. Just two dead center grays to go with the darks. Right, like dark neutral and dark warm. Mm -hmm. 
warm yellow is so good. Did it, did it, where did I put my model? Creepy's like, wait, khaki, as soon as I figured out how to mix khaki on my own. <laughs> this is, all right, I'm blown away. I'm like, uh, yeah, this could be your orc flesh tone for the rest of your life, pretty much right here, gang. Dark golden brown, who'd have thunk it? I do need another quick stab of color on that knee down there. I've done two layers of the wash on all of the skin spots. FYI. All right. Pretty good. All right, what's the next color? What do we want to do next? We got to work inside out with washes, especially because they're a little sloppy. So we got to start thinking about what's next to the skin. I'm not really sure what his armbands are made out of. I feel like that's metal or not real sure what's going on there. They're very heavy, like bulky heavy. And this, this one has like a metal fin or something on it. So I think those are like metal. It just does weird stuff over here. So I'm not really sure what to make of that. But we do have a lot of leather straps on him skin on this side some sort of he has a very patchwork thing going on here got like a padded leather shoulder plate there obviously the skull covering up some skin on this side horns uh I'm going to assume those are metal armor plates on his shoulders and the padded leather again and the cloak. Let's do the cloak. The cloak doesn't interfere with much else. So let's do the cloak. What color do we want the cloak to be? got to think about other other stuff too a very heavy leather looking breeches right because it has huge stitching down the seam so the pants could be brown right we could do that and then if we're doing that brown then we could do got this tunic skin stuff i like blue i think purple could be cool as well Kind of a, uh, ooh, what about burgundy for the cloak? Let's do burgundy. We got burgundy to play with, so let's do burgundy. Ta-da! Halo Horror says reddish brown. So we're going to do burgundy, not quite a brown, right? We'll pull the blue out this way. Again, I did not measure how many drops of wash medium there were, but I'm going to put one two three drops of paint this time i feel like i put more medium in there than i wanted and i also added too much water to it last time i'm just going to do a nice quick i can get it i'm almost out of water my spray bottle is a problem i need to do just a quick spritz of water like that three drops of paint a little bit of water medium You'll notice our medium is a lot thicker, right? Than washes you may be used to. And the goal is going to be to put it on the side of the cup and have it streak down pretty easily. So I probably want a little bit more water in there. I'm just gonna load the brush up with some water. A little thick, needs a little bit more water. There we go. Again, the nice thing with our wash is that because it acts differently than what you're used to, you saw me layer the wash 
like I would a regular acrylic paint. Where if you did that with most washes, you get it really gummed up. Sometimes it'll tear the wash, move it around, right? Not the case here. The case, the thing with the burgundy is that I'm wondering if it's going to be dark enough at the end of the day. We're going to go for it anyway. Screw it. We're playing. We can always darken it up if need be. But again, no water on the brush. I'm just, well, nothing that wasn't, you know, already from the last time I cleaned it. We're just going to go for it. Be more aggressive with it. easy now we can go whole hog back here have near as much detail right next to it. I'm just trying to because when you're doing this washing if we're going to do it on every every part of the model not something I normally do uh, we don't want to get it flooding other areas because we're not going to be you know applying a opaque paint to those other areas like the skull that would allow us to fix you know that overspray if you will of color not really an overspray but you get what i'm saying we got to paint the wash as if it were just a normal paint in order to get it to go exactly where we want it and nowhere else and we can because the medium is just a little bit thicker than you're used to like i said gravity still drags it into the low spots and builds pigment up like you would want for a shade or a normal wash even though the color we're using right now is not really a shade, right? But it will build up more pigment in the shadows. We already have our values locked on the model with that pre-highlight and the green transparent in the shadows mixed with the white highlight on there. That's where your initial setup does all the heavy lifting. The rest of this just conforms to that first application of paint. Right, so again, right across this top area, I really need to be able to just paint with it. Don't get it bleeding off onto that skull. I can.
Hey, Phil. Quitting right. time around here on a Thursday. Tim, what's going on, man? Yeah, hand feels a lot better today. Got a random question. Uh, are Sables Kalinsky? Yep. And just Sables because I read that Kalinsky Sable brushes aren't allowed in the U.S. You're curious, not that it's actually important at all. That's not true at all. You just have to be licensed with fish and wildlife. Uh, Lumberjack, I will probably do the challenge tomorrow. I'm probably going to cut it short today. We're only going to do two hours. Uh, Watamaton says, how many water cups did NGP? Oh, no, he didn't do it. He probably forgot, so don't remind him. So don't remind him. <laughs> so don't remind him. Yeah, you just have to be licensed with... Uh, fish and wildlife in order to be able to import stuff like that. There was a time where they mistakenly uh, called uh, sable in general a endangered species. And that is not the case. The weasel that we get the uh, sables from for brushes is not endangered, at least not at this point in time. But the North American, I don't remember. Some group made it where it was. So Fish and Wildlife had it listed and all that. It caused a bunch of problems years back. But that's been over for a long time. It's just now still on where you have to be licensed to import stuff like that. And so I think that during COVID, and, and this is just a guess on my part because it was never anything official released, but my thinking is that because we've seen it on other products, that customs and clearance agencies really started knuckling down during the pandemic, um, maybe because there's fewer people working. Work, you would think that with fewer people working and workload higher that you would have, you know, more stuff sneaking through, not getting... Um, handled, right, in the various jurisdictions like customs and so on and so forth. Instead, what wound up happening is that a lot of people found that they were like ordering brushes from overseas, and those brushes were getting held up in customs because they were not being uh, ordered or shipped with the proper paperwork for fish and wildlife because you as an individual can't get that license, right? <laughs> so, so, you know. I think that what happened is that rather than it being something where as a consumer, I don't know, can you can you as a consumer buy like an ivory elephant tusk and, and ship it in the country? I don't think so. I think the things that are on that list that you can't just buy, but maybe. There's a lot I don't know about it. Rosemary can't. It has to be the importer of record, not the exporter. The exporter has to provide a bunch of paperwork that traces all the way back to where the weasel started and was trapped. And so that causes a lot of problems for people that don't know, right? So if you don't have that record or as part of your acquisition of sable hair, don't know who the, you know, the original trapping place was and all of that, then it can cause some issues. It's all sorts of crazy. All right. Um, I feel like... I want to do some brown for his pants. And I think I'm going to do black brown for those. Right. Again, we've got lots of cups of wash being made here for not needing a lot of paint. Doing it to show off. Tell, this is from God Tier from Steamforge Games. This is a new model called Skullbreaker that I don't think is available yet. If it is, it's just now recently available. 
It's their latest release. I think it, they had it up on pre-order. Let's do one, two drops of paint this time. Uh, actually, I liked the actual coloring from three drops. I think I just am not good at my uh, adding water to it yet when using opaque paints. That actually looks really good, though. I'm going to try that. I'm not, I'm not going to thin it out at all. Let's just use it. Just a brush load, one single brush load of water. A lot heavier than the last application, but we're playing here. Let's see how that works. One more brush. <laughs> one more brush load of water. I'm like, I can't do it, Chad. I can't do it. My knowledge makes me not brave. I know just enough to scare me from doing these things. All right, that looks much better. Creepy's like, send it. Just do it. All right, here we go. Over there. Again, I'm not using, I'm not wetting my brush like I would with a normal paint. And I just want to this and throw it on here. Yeah, so a lot of companies stop shipping Kalinsky to the U.S. Because the receiver was being dinged as not an official licensed import place. And then what? Now you got some amount of money tied up in product that the customer never got. That's got to be a headache. In the world to even handle that. I believe, and don't quote me on this, but I believe that at the consumer level, you are not supposed, you're buying singles for personal use. I don't think you're supposed to have to be on the hook for any of that. But like I said, I feel like COVID or you know whatever, does nothing change. You can call fish and wildlife and nothing changed. Somebody someplace started pounding it. I know that like we got dinged with brush tubes coming in, the tubes that we pack our brushes in, those plastics we import. And uh, we got dinged because they said we needed to have some custom license for disposable products like trash bags. Like, I guess if you are a manufacturer of trash bags, you have to have a license and pay an annual fee for disposal, right? Because it's plastics that get thrown in a landfill. And I was like, these aren't that. And they were like, well, they're plastic bags. That's, that's what we're going to list them as. I was like, you don't have the right to list my product. <laughs> I had to get nasty with the... The agent, which I thought was going to get us in trouble, they finally succumbed, or, or we subdued them, and they understood what it was. I had to take a bunch of pictures and show them how the, you know, the brush tube is a not meant to be disposable. People trans like travel with their brushes in it, and you know it's a case. Good God, man! We have never in all of our years had anything like that pop up. So, like I said, I think it's either that you know they hire new people, and the new people are, you know, following the letter of the law without understanding it, or It's like asking your parents to go spend the night at your friend's house one week and they're fine with it. And then the next week they're like, no, you can't do that. Well, well why? It was all right last week. A 
Welcome to the joys of import-export. You never know what you're going to get. Oh, hey, not. somebody likes us. Hey, like you too. Warlock Bill, what is going on? We are uh, playing around with our new wash medium today in a way that I uh, am being forced out of my comfort zone here. I don't use washes very often at all, and uh, <laughs> but we're we're making a wash medium, and so today what we're doing is we're just uh, putting color opaque colors in the wash medium, and we're painting the whole model with washes. That's what's happening. So uh, it's being a tremendous amount of fun. I'm not gonna lie, and uh, we're getting exceptional results super super quickly. So again, also a fan. I'm not a fast painter. Ask anybody, they'll tell you. So anything that speeds up a model getting to a semi-okay looking state where you can then start doing your highlight details and things like that, I'm starting to dig it. I'm starting to feel like this ain't such a bad idea. We uh, took the liberty of using our transparent green to pre-shade the model so that all of our shadows have a defined green tinge to them and now we're using the opaque paints over the top of that to get some really cool color combos that green tends to you know it plays differently with the burgundy wash over it than it does with the dark golden brown wash that we did for the skin right and definitely different with the you know the black brown as we're doing the ponce the pantaloons pantalones Like, 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 looks pretty good. Looks pretty cool. Uh, did I get all the pants? I feel like I did. I also want to do the leather wraps on his hands in this color, I think. Oh, yeah, it just feels good painting. It's like, it's like the magic glaze. Maybe we'll call it magic medium. There's already magic mediums out there, though, so somebody probably get mad at us from a trademark standpoint. But it is kind of magic in that it just freaking gives you this amazing translucence. And... Uh, also a good amount of color. I mean, you guys are seeing it happen right in front of your faces. Glazing that leather to that level, right, would take quite a bit. And yet we get a really good consistent coat with one pass of brown on it this way. And it's given us a really, for this model, it's spectacular right now the way we're doing the colors because the opaque colors tend to get that very desaturated look to them. Um, the matte does not break when using the wash medium, as you can tell, right? So it, the, the colors keep their matte finish, which is spectacular. It's what you want. Um, but in doing so, it gives a very desaturated, almost worn look to it the way that we're running it. And for this model, it's fantastic. Right? This beat up leather feel just kind of instantly happens. And I haven't even done but one pass with the brown. I also didn't use water to thin this down, remember, so we have that going for us on this, this pass.
drunken unicorn spit. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be confusing. That would be confusing. I like where your head's at, but that would be very confusing. All right. Put that away. The nice thing, too, is it has a, uh, a drying retarder portion of it, too, so I can set those over there, and we could still come back and use our mixes much later in the day. So. Hook a dook. Got like a waist cloth thing going on around the pants that I would really like to do like a dark blue with. I think just a bunch of crazy colors on him. He looks like the kind of bandit that would just have pieces of whatever he'd run across. Hanging out. Maybe a dark blue on that. We've got these, right? It's, it's almost like these things were stolen from a knight or something, right? Right, because they have that shape. Come up of a, a squire or something. He just steals shit from people he doesn't, doesn't need in his life anymore. Like a dark, dark blue on that one. Let's do that. Or purple. Could purple be the right answer here? No, blue. Blue. I really want like a dark gray blue. What about like a blue black? Let's do blue black. Blue, black, always purple. <laughs> I usually say it with purple. Warlock Bill, you mind if I ask what the mixture is on what we're painting right now? Uh, this is our wash medium. It's a, it's a new medium that we're coming out with. Uh, we will be doing it in um, three premixed colors, a black, a brown, and a flesh wash. Um, and then you'll get the medium in a 120 ml bottle. Think like our primer. Right, so you'll be able to get a big bottle of wash medium, and then you'll be able to get premixed washes in our standard 22 mil. So black, brown, flesh wash in standard 22 mil bottles, and then 120 mil of the medium that you'll be able to buy for somewhere in the neighborhood of like 14, 15 dollars for the bottle of medium. And the bottle of medium will allow you to do what we're doing here, which is mix all of these really cool wash colors with either opaque acrylics like ours or our transparent line with our transparent line it just is like miraculous what you can do right now i'm using opaque colors because the the journey that i'm taking today is to get um you know more interaction with the opaque so i can you know better learn the mixes so i can teach you guys all of that so let's do uh let's do a little bit less since we know we don't need a whole lot of this right. so whatever that was 10 drops all right and then we'll go ahead and put two drops of paint in there. We'll get a brush load of water. I would really like for that to be the key because that's the way it is with transparent is you just kind of add a brush load of water into it, right? Just to get that flow a little bit better. And boom, and you just want it to do like that, be kind of like a slow drip down the side of the cup, right? You can see you've got a good amount of opacity on the wash that's hard to tell because that's like the background right if that's the size of the medium just wait till you see the large. Wah, wah, wah. Thanks for coming, Just B. What's going on? <laughs> That's actually a really good one. Again, going heavy in the shadow side here. Worries in the world.
would have liked this a little more blue, but I'm kind of okay with this. Gray is interesting too. It's still blue black, but what we're, what's happening is the green and the mint from the pre-highlight, because we're doing a wash here, right? We're always kind of mixing on the model, so to speak. And uh, since we went with such a, uh, a heavy, I say a heavy, a very pronounced green shadow that then gives us this mint color in the mid-tones with the white pre-highlight, right? That has a very big effect on all the paint that you're going to put on here in a wash. And so our blue-black loses a little bit of the blue hue as it leans into that mint. But it's actually very cool. Oh, that's a different thing. Whoops. We won't paint that with wash because I just put the wrong color wash on it. The thing that holds the bones is like a different strap. I thought it was the same piece of cloth. Did not. Let's have a good amount of detail for being. They're kind of like the hate models again is the best uh, analog I can give you. Comparison, I guess. Even though they're the kind of cheap board game plastic resin models. They, they have a lot of detail, as you can see. They are very inexpensive. So one of the reasons I can get excited about saying, hey, if you guys haven't tried God Tier, we got no skin in the game, right? I don't know the guys at Steamforge Games. They don't know us. You don't know them nothing. I just like cool models and fun games. And uh, this one is both cool models and a fun game. And they're inexpensive because of the route they chose for their material, mainly. I think that the uh, going retail cost, before any discounts, if you get them from a discount retailer or something, is twenty nine ninety five for a warband. That's uh, champion followers and the banner or flag banner. They're not very big banners, so. For most of them. We'll call it a flag. I think in the game it's called a flag anyway. It's God Tier from Steamforge Games. All right, let's do, let's do, I think I want to do another pass with the Burgundy, to be honest with you. And again, uh, just a fun game. Good rule set, fast paced, bloody, good scoring system. Um, a game you could do like best two out of three in the tournament. Yeah, look at that. Punch it up a bit. I love how with the green, we're almost getting a purple glow out of this. In the shadows now.
Again, layer it like a paint, right? If you're doing something like this where your coloring is really looking to come from the wash alone, or, you know, in this case, we, we did some shadow color too, but don't be afraid to layer it. You know, non-traditional. This is more along the lines of, and I dread to say it, you know, that, that contrast paint style of painting. Uh, not what we had in mind necessarily when we went and created the wash line. It doesn't mean that it isn't fantastic for that, as you're seeing. Give you a really good douse of color when doing brighter colors and not just worried about your shadows. The fact that you can layer it up, it doesn't get all gummy like other washes do. Not like it's a weird plastic at the end of the day, and if you paint over the top of it with itself, it tends to rip and tear and such. That's not what ours does. Give it a few minutes like we did by painting some other part of the model, let it dry, and come back and paint over it. You can see how, while still getting closer to full opaque, not uh, just overtaking it 100% here with a second layer. Still being able to get some of that green mint. Yeah, I'm super happy with that. Peace, mate. Take it easy, man. Nice, creepy. I'm glad he's digging it. The magic is implied. I didn't read that part of it, Mo. You are correct. Yeah, possum. I'm using the number four right now, like everybody says in chat. It's probably my favorite brush. I'm using the one that comes out of uh, Uncle Adam's favorite brush set, the Tabletop Minions Pro Synthetic number four. But it's the exact same as our regular Pro Synthetic number four, just the handle is shiny black and red dipped. All right. This is like a jawbone. I don't know what to do there. I feel like on that, I want to play around and, like, you know, wet blend the washes. Let's get two of them mixed and play around with splotchy color on the bone. Yeah. Like, uh, like warm flesh and khaki. I feel like. Let's do that. And now I'm just, now I'm just having fun, so. Well, automaton, awesome. The Uncle Adam set? Awesome. Number one, thank you for supporting us. Number two, thank you for supporting Uncle Adam. All of the uh, name brand, if you want to call them, like uh, the Sam Lynn set and Uncle Adam's favorite brushes, all of those sets are uh, built so that they give money back to the artist. We make less, the artist makes more, and uh, you get a cool set of brushes. We like to support those people that are putting out tremendous content and on the interwebs and what better way to do it to show them some monetary love so know that your investment is going much further all right so what do we think khaki those are going to get really bright though so let's maybe do i like the warm flesh in there but i need like a darker maybe we do like uh like light umber yeah? 
Yeah, let's do light umber and warm flesh and see what we get. We already have green-ish on there from the, uh, the first shade. Yeah, if you're in New Zealand, uh, we do have an Australian distributor opening up soon. So hopefully we'll be able to rectify that solution for you and get your zone. But also um, Singapore, right? Game state in Singapore is fantastic. And they can ship to you in New Zealand in that end of the Pacific for much less than we can. Okay, again, I'm going to put three in there. I'm going to go back and put another extra drop of light umber in this one over here. Since I'm going to be wet blending them, let's have some uh, extra pigment in there to play around with. So again, this is a, one of the new colors, Warm Flesh. This is one of those where my Project Neutral, my dirty water and my paint water is going to uh, alter these colors a little bit, which is fun. My paint water right now is kind of a weird greenish blue, like a dark jade almost. Bye, Ruben. Thank you, man. See you tomorrow. Zero, like Jen said, hopefully expansion set for later this month. We are hoping to be filling in about two weeks. So it will be end of the month before we have them on our shelves. And then for you with local stores and other places around the globe to buy them uh, after that. Uh, I probably want to use a number six for this because it's a bigger area. And we want to have some fun. So let's just do some splotchy wet blending with the... Uh, the washes this time. So I'm going to just reach over here and see if I can't get these a little bit more on stream so you can see since I'm using plastic cups makes it easier. Again, no water on the brush. We're just going to grab this and kind of blotch it around on the bone. Move it. I'm going to grab some of this other. Doesn't help me, like right where I need to put my hand. Just poking it on the model right now. Take one color of the wash. Poke it into the other one and go the other direction. Again, kind of like wet blending, except not. I was planning to, but I don't know if I'm going to make it. Well, huzzah, huzzah. I'll just throw back my legs and pollute my britches with delight. Yeah, we'll do some, we'll do some therapy whip. Works pretty good. 
Iron Raven, 38 months. Thank you so much, man. Welcome back. Hope everybody's having a great week. Our first week back at it after having a week off last week for Las Vegas Open, and I bunged my hand all up, so my painting hand was a couple of jammed fingers and not faring so well. So thanks for bearing with us on that and being gone for the convention. I always hate not being able to stream. Sometimes it's hard to get back into the flow of it, right? I can't remember what day it is. Right, so again, that's just light umber. Then we take the warm flesh. I know. Wrap it around in the umber. Keep going once we have those colors mixed together. Kind of flow into it right there where it kind of just goes in the cracks. I don't know if I want the brighter color in the crack or not, but we can always come back and highlight in detail without the washes at the end of the day. And on these areas where we're creating brighter filters, we can then come back with a darker wash afterwards for the shade as well. So sky's the limit when painting this way. Create, do whatever you feel like you want to, get crazy with it. I like that a lot. We'll let that dry and see what it looks like. I don't know that we want to do the bone up here the same way. Probably not. We don't have to paint everything with the washes. I just want to get the bulk of things done that way. I want to do a black down on the boots. We have that as one of our pre-mixed. Do that real quick. Lady B, what's going on? You go now. Take it easy, man. <laughs> Creepy. Have a good one. Is this the movie of the week or whatever?
This will be one of the washes you get that comes pre-mixed for you. You could make your own blacks out of our black transparent. Um, that is not what the black wash is. It is a custom mix, custom pigment made to be a solid competitor to a known oil or similar. But with the medium, sky's the limit, you make your own as well. I'm not going to do the non-metallic metal stuff with uh, the washes, I don't think. Still trying to not get wash all over them, but I'm not doing a very good job. So, Light little areas to get in and out. JP Gray, what's going on? What's he griping about? JP, did you have your heart set on something that came in stock, left stock, came back in stock, left stock again? And you feel missed out? Be quick, boy. Actually, it's not so much this day, these days. Production is. So much better than it ever has been. But with that comes increased demand. And then we sell out again. <laughs> like, ah! Snake, what's going on? A troll never gripes. He just points out flaws. There are no flaws. Except with the troll. Control is the flaw in the machine. Again, not adding any water to it. I'm just using it straight out of the bottle. Or the jar, our sample jar, as it were, in this case. Again, I like the way that uh, our jade-ish or mint undercoat 
is working with the black. Oh, look at that bone. I'm not even paying attention. Are you guys paying attention while this is curing on here? Holy hell. That's the uh, warm flesh wash and the light umber. Yeah. That's, that's really good. Mentioned about a potential AU supplier for your products. Can you name them? Uh, probably not because they have not placed their order yet. And they've been on the books now for a month and a half. I'm still hoping for good things. But they've been uh, struggling to get the order in. So we'll see what happens. Singapore is not that, that heavy to you, Possum. Like, we've heard from most of our customers over in Australia that when they purchased from Singapore, that that's about the same as it would be in-country for them. So... All right, let's think about this. We've got... What else can we do with the washes? These skulls? And antlers, maybe? Yeah, like the the bones on his shoulder, but I don't want to do them the same as the jaw here. I think that gets a little too samey, right? All the metal we won't do. Uh, the padded leather, like on his neck, the shoulder plate in here. I think there was like one other spot where that existed. Maybe not. Maybe not. I'm kind of thinking like like somebody mentioned a brownish red when we did the cape, but I want to do the cape and the burgundies. So maybe the shoulder pads and that padded leather we can do in a brownish red. That would be kind of cool. So let's do one. We already have this black brown. So let's take the black brown that we know we're done with and uh, let's add some burnt red or let's add some red transparent to it so it doesn't. doesn't affect the opacity just a whole hell of a lot. Mm, it's fine, dry. Malev! What is going on, my man? The man, the myth, the legend. What's happening, Malev? Ooh, that's perfect right there. What's happening, man? Welcome, Raiders. Hello, hello. We are painting with washes today. We are making washes with our upcoming wash medium and painting a dude. So we have done this 100% with the washes so far. We did uh, green transparent and white primer um, pre-highlight. And then everything else is done with just a coat or two of... Uh, wash over the top of that so uh having a lot of fun this is using opaque paints so we've done like his skin was dark golden brown two layers of dark golden brown in our wash medium that was this i think this color believe it or not gave us that skin tone over the green you can see the faint green and white pre-highlight so over that green, the, uh, the wash done in the, the dark golden brown gave us a really, really cool orc skin tone there. The cape 
is burgundy, which is a new color that comes out in our next uh, release of paints. The camera makes it look a little bit brighter than it really is. It isn't quite as bright as that. <laughs> and uh, it's more this. It is the color that's on here, not the color that the cup looks for some reason. Camera hates it. Right. We did burgundy again, just solo with the wash medium. Uh, we did the pants with black brown that I just erased and put some red transparent into to get this blood red that I'm going to use for another uh, uh, portion of the model. Then we used straight black, our black wash on the boots. And for the bone, the jawbone sword, we took a, uh, a combo of light umber and the new warm flesh and wet blended them. So I made, I couldn't leave well enough alone. We're trying all sorts of fun stuff. So we wet blended those two across the jawbone to get a really neat kind of model bone color to set up some really neat base tones for all that. Again, that green really doing work showing through and giving us a good deep shadow and crazy color mix. And that's what we're doing. What are you guys doing? How's your stream, Hello? To take this uh, deep reddish brown, and we're going to do these added leather bits here. Winds up being almost a, just a deeper version of the burgundy, so that kind of cool. You want wash medium? It's really bitching. <laughs> I mean, like, it's really bitching. Like, we've been doing this for two hours, and I've already got, I mean, we could have a done model by the end of the stream if I really stopped talking as much. <laughs> yeah, I'm super hyped on all of the possibilities and seeing all the fun stuff people do. You know, every time we come out with a new style of product, I'm always hyped to watch the community do fun stuff with it and learn it and tell me like, oh my God, I didn't have any idea it could do this, like with the transparents. Because the wash medium was really engineered to work with our transparent lineup and give you an amazing way to create, you know, a bajillion different colors of, uh, you know, shades, washes. And now with the opaque paints, we can show you how well all that works. And that opens up a whole new world of you being able to mad scientist, as it were. All right. Now I think we'll just go to a traditional non-wash with the uh, the brown transparent, perhaps, on some of the leather here. Maybe maybe this skin up underneath would be good for that. I'm not real sure what this thing is over here. It looks like they might have wanted to sculpt a belt buckle, but it's not really a belt. Oh, there is as a chest strap that goes across and holds all those horns on. I see it now. Well, then what color is this skin under here going to be? It could just be human flesh. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. 
you can see the potential for wash medium, not just for the use with your paints, but other lines as well. Well, I mean, sure, if that's your thing. <laughs> but why wouldn't you just use it with eye? Uh, I'm wondering if I have anything I can mix the shadow flesh with that I already have a wash for. But I'll just make another one. I'll just have millions of cups of wash going all at the same time. It's fine. People are going to be like, can I see the wash medium? I'm like, I ran out. <laughs> I ran out, I painted this model, and made 80 million cups of wash with opaque paints. All right. Ein, zwei, drei. Brush a load of water. Boom. Oh, that brush still had some burgundy in it or something. Oh, that reddish brown. That's not bad. That won't be a bad deal. A little bit more water in there just to thin it out. So basically what we're doing is we're like three to one wash medium to paint when we're doing the opaque. And then I'm taking a brush load of water or two on a number six brush to mix with just a big hefty brush to mix all my paint with. So uh, a consider probably equal amount of water to paint or maybe more um, just to get it to flow the way you want to and to thin the color the way you want. You can adjust that to match your goals and such. Instant flayed human flesh. Hey, somebody likes us. Kitty, what's going on? Problem here is that as we're painting with washes in tiny areas, I've got to make sure I don't overload it and drip it all over the other parts of the model. I would like to be able to continue using wash on all the other parts too. Know that there is any more. I think it's just those pieces on the shoulder. Kind of odd. I really like this color. <laughs> oh, we can do these flaps down here with it too. In between the bones, that looks like it should be flesh. I mean, why not? We got some of the the dark gray wash from the tabard on this so these are going to probably be darker maybe need a coat or two extra wash on them but again like we were saying earlier uh maybe if you weren't here our washes are thicker than you're going to be used to i am not a guy that traditionally likes to use a lot of washes so when i make things like um you know, paints that I don't traditionally paint with, like our metallics, right? We still try to look at ways that would make me use them. And one of the things I don't like about washes is their uncontrollable nature. Once you put them on a model, they just kind of go where they want, do what they want. You know, it's like, hey, you either like what I created or screw you, the way washes work. And I don't like that. So we've made a wash that's a little bit thicker. And in being a little bit thicker, allows it to be pushed around so you can force it into areas. Gravity still works its magic on it. It will still push it into cracks and crevices to create shades and all the stuff we love washes for. But I can also move it 
right? So that like here where I'm trying to cover up a darker color, it will uh, it'll play better. I'm noticing I got some of it dripped in between there. See if we can grab that out of there. What is the best starter paint brand? You just need a set as you have nothing. Ours. <laughs> Welcome. If I have not said it, we are Monument Hobbies. We make all of the paint you see us painting with. It is called Procryl. Like others have said, and thank you, Hale, and others in chat. Um, our paints are 22 mil of paint, so we give you about 25% more paint than anybody else out there um, at the same price or just a hair more in some cases, less in some cases. We're the best Bang for your buck while also being a very high-grade artist paint. Uh, because we make it ourselves here where you see me painting, um, we, can, uh, we can give you better value than a lot of places. So we would ask that you give us a try. I think you'll like it. I think you will. You'll be pleasantly surprised. Now I'm going to cheat. We're not going to do a wash. We're just going to use our transparent brown on its own. I had to throw them away, yeah. Yeah, the, uh, you know, our, our bottles are sealed so that they will stay uh, in good condition longer, even if you go long times without painting, right? We try to take all of that into account. I've been an artist painting miniatures for 40 years, so been through the ringer with, holy hell, what are all the things that I hate about hobby paints and artist paints and pretty much all paints, right? And so... Uh, we try to do all of the things that make you turn around and say, oh, wow, I'm glad they thought of that. Right, so this will give us a splash of a different brown here because I'm not doing this as a wash. This is just water, straight up water mixed with our brown transparent. The beauty of transparent paints. They are going to let that white, really, of the pre-highlight and the green uh, blast through. Because they have a, uh, as you can tell by the name, hopefully, they have a lower opacity right out of the bottle. So this is going to give us a neat brown that doesn't exist on the model already without me having to mix any more colors and such. And again, these are not washes. These are just paints. They just have a uh, lower opacity straight out of the bottle that allows them to give you some of the benefits that washes give as being a filter, meaning that I can put them over the top of another color and they will blend that color that's beneath them. but they have a very high pigmentation, as you can tell, just this brown transparent, even thinned with water, gives me a very punchy brown right out of the gates. And we're still base coating technically, right? We haven't even gotten to detailing on this model and already it looks a lot better than just going through and putting one layer of opaque paint down like we normally would. Or even if we had done the green shadow and then you know, a layer of skin over the top and whatever. This, uh, Wash method, I think, would be great for getting a whole army done real quick. All the 
rage with contrast paints and such. I have high expectations for you guys to really start pushing the envelope with all of our transparents and other colors. Once you can get your hands on the wash medium, and we're hoping that that will be sometime in March. Not 100% sure yet when we're going to see it hit. We'll keep you posted on the Discord, exclamation point Discord and chat. Join the Discord. No better reason is needed than to just keep up with all of the real cool stuff we got going on. So I'm thinking that these are like vertebrae. <laughs> I feel like those are vertebrae on there. Are they wrapped and then bone? And then there's like leather wraps? I feel like yes. So we're going to do brown transparent on what I believe are also leather wraps. But that, that's tough, man. That feels like maybe that's all vertebrae. I'm going to do leather here. Chunk the nerve on my brush. There we go. I use a dry palette for those who don't know. Just a piece of glass. And uh, I don't clean it as often as I should. So sometimes I go over there and I get paint and I get a little extra in my paint. I get the dried flakes of the paint that's underneath the place I put my paint. <laughs> So I got that going for me. That's usually a, a neat bonus. Something you don't see all the time. Helps out with your painting. Doesn't really. What clear medium are you talking about? The wash medium? I tend to go from the mindset that when thinning or cutting paint with mediums and such, Cut it further than you like or that you may feel comfortable with because you can always add more paint. Um, you know, I understand when people say, you know, you, uh, you can't go the other direction, right? You want you to thin a paint, but you can, right? You can uh, add more pigment and bring it back and overpower whatever medium, clear or otherwise, you've added to it. Um, but the real deal is the effect on the model. Less so... The effect of the paint itself, right, and on the palette or in a tube or, you know, uh, a cup or whatever you do. Um, you know, the, the reality is that once it's on the model, you can't go and fix if you are looking for a particular opacity and you go more opaque than you were looking for. You can't make that more translucent on the model. So if that was a conversation, I would say... The opposite is probably true to what's being said in chat. I would always start thinner where you can add more meat. Uh, it would be better for you to add more pigment by layering it up again and again and again rather than the opposite. You get just a really nice blend from our shadow across our browns transparent brown doing work hey somebody likes us 
Narcissus, what's going on? Thank you for that follow. Sneak some in here by the pinky, too, just because I don't know what color that would be otherwise. Other back here, I don't think so. None of any note, really. Got skulls and rings. I've got to figure out what to do with these uh, these skulls. I'm thinking. I'm thinking, and I know that's dangerous. We could do some wet blending again on those. I, I don't mind having both shoulders be the same color, and even the bone on the belt. I just don't want them to be the same here, right? We did this wet blending with washes here um, using light umber and warm flesh and just kind of wet blended the washes together just kind of smudged them all on there um, again a different type of of painting with washes than you might think of but it gives us a really neat coloration right? now i'm thinking for the bones on the shoulders maybe we go uh we go darker do we go brighter We could use some oranges. We could use like a burnt sienna or like a, how about dark flesh? We could use dark flesh, one of the new expansions at four colors. And do that with the light umber wash that we already have. Maybe let's try that. That'll tie them in and make them feel like just a different kind of bone, perhaps. Maybe, maybe I'm crazy. We'll see. What kind of holder am I using? It's one that we hope to be releasing at some point in time, but we're not ready yet. It is done with Ferox Fabrication up in Canada. And it is just a really cool, uh, he tooled it after the cork that I always use, right? So I normally use cork. And I just stick the miniature in the cork like this skull on poster tack, right? Um, but, you know, this is even cooler because it has a base that screws into it and then different magnetized pucks that go on top so you can do anything you want and I have a bunch of the pucks laying around different models sitting on magnetized bases that I can just pop onto the holder works pretty well has been on the back burner through the holidays same with the uh desk utility here that I have this modular painting station that's flat has magnetized areas for holding all the paints you're using up top brush holder uh, tool holder down here there's another thing off to the side that has my water cup in it and all that stuff so we are uh, working on all of that all right oh I think that was three <laughs> I think it got away from me. I think it put three in before I was ready. All right, so dark flesh. Not quite as orangey as uh, burnt sienna or burnt orange, but I like oranges on skulls. Right? I like that kind of warm shadow that it gives when underpainting bone uh, and then i'm going to take the light umber that we used as the dark color on the jawbone right the jawbone had more green these things this jaw here has a lot of green on it the under part of this shoulder has a lot of green left so that's going to get really dark this one does not right so i don't want to go just bright colors on it because that's just going to radiate so let's uh let's do this Let's do this. Go in and start with a lot of flesh wash on here. Get away from me here, so we'll soak some up. Back up there. There we go. Almost like I know what I'm doing. Yeah, 
That's what I talked about. That's what I just talked about, Snake. The holder. Did you step away when I talked about it? Works pretty good. Get some more darker color in the eye socket there. Yeah, it's just a, uh, if you were gone when I was talking about the holder portion of it, it is uh, a recreation of the shape of cork. Large uh, wine flask corks that we tend to use for painting. just in a hardwood we hope to uh, release those this year these this year release them this year and I'm just kind of playing and blending color here be careful not to get too much. I'm up in the shadow areas there. And grab the same wash, but with the light umber in it, and poke it along those same areas up towards highlights. More. see how that sets up I think it's gonna give us a great base coat that then we highlight on top of a great effect same thing over here you know the dark flesh wash and work it into most of the shadow areas first Notice how I won't bring it all the way out to the edge of the jawbone there. I'll also sink it into the area where the root of the tooth hits. Grab some of the light umber. Put it right down along the bottom. Top edges of these things. back to the darker color here I'm not really clearing my brush as I go like you might think because the washes tend to act a lot differently on the brush hairs so I'm not getting as much um, 
what do you call it, cross-contamination, as I would if I were just wet blending regular colors. They're getting some, but not near as bad. Go ahead and do the teeth, even though I'll probably come back and paint the teeth a totally different color. And just like wet blending, opaque colors just kind of push them into one another. I think on this, because it's kind of up high, you go in with the light umber first. There's not as much shadow here. We'll take a little bit of the darker and just jab it into where we know we've got shadow to go. Again, making sure I'm pressing them into one another. You don't want to leave them unmixed. Even though the wash will probably dry in a way that won't make any sense. Hey, somebody likes us. Hey, hey. We like you too. Thank you for that follow. area up in here we're just dark flash Level of detail. Thank you for the follow. We are, for those of you that are tuning in a little late, we uh, have decided to paint this guy strictly with washes. Well, for the main colors. There's going to be some parts where I just can't do with wash. Like the non-metallic, I'll do all my regular way. But as you can see with the bone and stuff that we're doing now, the goal is to just use these washes. 
and uh, kind of throwing on various colors right now and wet blending them for something that is not a well-known quality of washes that you find people doing. Uh, this is using our wash medium. Uh, we are Monument Hobbies. If you're not familiar with us, we make a line of paints called Procryl. And we have a wash medium and line of washes coming out a month or two. And we uh, are using the wash medium today and mixing it with uh, our opaque colors. In this case, dark flesh and light umber. Create some cool filtering. And it really is just like finger painting, just having fun. Putting paint on models. Having a good old time. This is the white umber wash right now. Poke it around. Here we Blend it in where possible with the dark flesh. Like, I know I've got an area like a top of a cheekbone or brow or nasal bone where I'm going to have some highlight later, then that'll be where I focus. But the wet blended wash gives us a really good base coat. You can see on this one. Spot right there. Line right down in. Again, the hardest part about trying to paint this way is that in fine detail with wash. The good thing our wash medium is a little bit thicker, like I was saying, allows me to get in there and actually paint a line with it. I can layer some of these darker areas up. You'll notice it dries very, very flat. No sheen. No matter how you're mixing it, you get some really, really cool effects going. I'm going to go back to the shadow flush. bits of skin that we're using leather here. I think that's where we'll stop on him for today. Not too shabby. Again, we've been able to get some really good coloration out of just the washes over that green and white pre-shade for the skin. Kind of yellowish orc flesh that we talked about wanting to do. The burgundy hey, cloak works really good. Rakdo, what is going on? 
right? These wet blended bone areas, like these jaws and shoulder pauldrons that we've done. Did that on the dark flesh and the light umber. Did the light umber and the warm flesh for the jawbone sword. Get some really interesting base coats there. And of course, all of these, as the base coats of the model, still have some pretty good value to them. The model does not look bad. You could technically just paint a whole army like this and call it a day, right? You could have uh, a really good looking army at the end. But what we'll be doing is after we have all these base coats seated on here, then we'll go and do our standard detailing. Highlights, um, you know, adding in textures and things like that as needed to really start pulling it all out. But it gets so much of the heavy lifting done, I think, that, you know, I mean, we've got good value. All of the folds and shading on the jeans or the leather pants, the boots, right? The cloak, the bones, the skin. So really highlights are going to be a lot easier than normal. And the only real tough thing is going to be that, you know, I mean, I could go in and use a wash on these teeth, but I'll probably just paint those normally. I don't know. I haven't, maybe we'll decide to do something different. Maybe we should do that same bone on the end of the, uh, the sword here before we quit, huh? So these are the vertebrae skull. bottom here again just kind of poke the darker color into the shadows like any wet blending we're doing wash doesn't change the way that part works and then do the brown top and just kind of squib them together in the meeting area in between Too easy. Tell you what, been afraid of wet blending. These things make it really, really easy. And you know what? I'm sitting here thinking this would be good for the teeth here as well. Let's do this. Just when I thought I was going to quit, I was a liar. I think even though I want the bone to be different across these surfaces, I think this color of bone from the shoulder on the teeth gives us a really good combo of the bone we've already done. Stop messing stuff up. The wet blend makes it look like we haven't used the same light umber that we used on the rest of that. And that's going to give us a good starting point for most. Matter of fact, again, I'm just looking for where I've got the shadow from the pre highlight going in the dark flesh on that side. back at it with the umber and blend them together.
uh, on towards the gum line here. Darkness on the back of the tooth, actually. Very rare that I get to paint this messily and feel good about it. I think that works good. I think that's the perfect combo. Same bone color that pulls it together. But if this whole sword was the same bone as what's on the shoulders and stuff, I think that would get too out of control. Be too samey. I get really uh, antsy. I don't know if that's the right word. When stuff starts to look too much of the same color on the model. Make sure I've got good coverage. That's pretty good. I don't know what I'm going to do with these antler things. I don't want them to be the same. Again, don't want to, it'd be too samey. We've got metal shoulder plates in there to break it up. We've got some sort of, I don't know what's behind these antlers on his chest. Again, it could be a metal thing. We've got buckles and metal... Uh, Tracers and they got bone. We got to paint down here. Metal on his boots. We'll do all that as non-metallic. But not a bad run for a couple hours worth of work. I am fully satisfied with uh, being able to show you the cool things you can pull off with the upcoming wash medium and our opaque paints. Right? Create any color you want from one magic bottle of medium, right? That a cool. The Huff, what's going on, man? Aiken for bacon, great name. Painterly Git says, are the Proacryl paints single pigment? Mo uh, so I can't say most. A large portion of them are. The entire transparent range of nine paints is all single pigment. Um, colors like red, orange, yellow, um, uh, titanium white. Um, good gosh, I'm gonna have to stare at them here and tell you which out of them are. Uh, already mentioned red, orange, yellow, white, one of the blues, uh, just blue. Um, and then any of them that are not are basically going to be. 95% or greater single pigment with just a little bit of tint, tone, or shade in there of another single pigment. So, you know, when, when people, and, and I get myself in trouble here because I say that, you know, because you, you can get into the science of subtractive mixing and you can prove how having single pigments is obviously the best way to do it because you get a more true to life mix of those colors. Um, and so if you're going through all the gamut stuff and, and all that, scientifical lingo 
then you know you'll you'll prove me wrong. But the reality is, when painting miniatures, that as long as you're talking about primarily single pigment, you know, and that uh, the proportions are right, then you get exactly what you're intending to get when you mix the colors. Oh, show. Grandpa says, uh, when are the washes coming out? You missed the memo, and hello all. I didn't send you a memo. <laughs> Turns out. But we're hoping in March, probably late March. Expansion set four, the 12 new paint colors, uh, the 12 new opaque colors uh, come out later this month or right at the beginning of March. It'll probably bridge that, you know, last week of February, first week of March when they're available on the site. So uh, we'll have expansion set four ready to go. I've used a bunch of those colors here today, including like the, the warm flesh and the... Uh, the wet blending of the bone here, uh, the dark flesh that you just let me use on the teeth and the bones on the shoulders and stuff like that. Um, the burgundy that I've used for the cloak. Uh, what else? What else? What else? I think that's it. Right. Well, we've got like bright jade, faded green, uh, warm yellow, a bunch of really, really cool colors that I've been using a lot on stream here lately. Uh, coming out in expansion set four. Um, same price as expansion set one. It's 12 colors. Um, and then the washes will be the next release after that. So we'll let Expansion Set 4 get a bunch of traction, get through the, the hubbub of when we release new paints, because we haven't released new paints. And other, I mean, we've released the primers, and we've released the texture paints, and we've released Transparent White. But we haven't had a new set for over two years. So think about that. Or right at two years. Because Expansion Set 3 was just coming out at the last Las Vegas Open we were at in 2020. So yeah, so two years since a big release like this. So I'm assuming it's going to be a, a fairly large uh, uptick in excitement for all the new colors. So we'll get through all of that and then the washes will be quick on the heels there. That's the next release. And then hopefully after that, we'll be looking at varnishes and mediums, right? Uh, the wash medium, not included. The wash medium is part of the wash release. Uh, we'll have three colors of washes, bra uh, black, brown, and flesh, and then the wash medium. So there'll be four wash products. Three premixed for the stuff you use most of the time for shades, uh, flesh shade, you know, uh, earth shade, you know, and then just a standard black shade. Um, and then you will have the wash medium to use. Like all we've done today is use the wash medium. I use the black, the out of the bottle black I used on the boots. Right. See how, I mean, that turned out fantastic, right? The boots are just like done, <laughs> right? So, uh, but all the rest of them we made out of the wash medium and our opaque paints, as you've seen, except for the, uh, the brown straps on the weapon and his chest. That was just transparent brown. So, hashtag soon on those. Order jump, what's going on, man? Uh, looking at brushes. Good night over there. Uh, looking at brushes on the website, would you mind uh, kind of talking on the diffs between your brush lines, synthetic, sable, et cetera? Um, yeah, no problem. Uh, so when you're talking about any brush, not just ours, right, the, um, the difference between sables and synthetics is, by and large, when discussing our pro line, pro synthetics versus sable in general, not just our pro sables, but sable in general. Sable is going to be a little bit more flexible. So if you have a heavier hand, if you feel like you paint with a lot more uh, pressure on the brush, so the way I describe it is that when you watch me paint, if you really watch me paint, like if you, you pay attention not so much to what I'm painting but how I'm painting, you'll notice that a lot of times my brush doesn't bend much at all, right? It only flexes at the tip, or I'm using the side of the brush. It doesn't flex much. If you find yourself painting and your brush is flexing like this, like you're you know, you're painting and you're bending your brush over at 45 degrees to 90 degrees, you know, with every brush stroke. Like you're really, that's not hammering it. It's not like you're, oh, I paint models, you know. Um, but when we say heavy handed, it doesn't mean that you're aggressive with it or anything. It just means that as you paint, you put more force down on the brush. Well, when you do that, the physics of it causes that tip to want to spread quicker, right? And, uh, and so you would want a more flexible hair, and so Sable will do that, right? It will give you more point control with more pressure. Um, if you're like me and you paint with a more delicate hand, you're using the side of the brush more than painting like a pencil, you know? You're not really using the, the tip directly on very much, which you shouldn't be anyway, um, unless you're doing like, you know, freehand uh, graphics or something. 
um, then uh, the, I believe the synthetic is, is your better bet because the synthetic is going to have much more snap to it. It's a little bit stiffer. Uh, our pro synthetic line um, is going to have uh, a little bit of stiffness that I feel it feels a lot better when painting three-dimensional objects. Um, you won't get the problem where when you're painting at an angle, you'll find the brush starts to tilt like that with like a sable wheel because it's so soft and a, acrylic paint builds up in it. And so it starts to kind of, you know, hook off and onto one side. Uh, the synthetics will always snap right back to where you want them. And uh, yeah, that's the biggest difference. Uh, new synthetics draw, hold, and release paint just as well as sables do. I paint with our pro synthetics pretty much exclusively. And, you know, every model that I've done, like this was, what would we say, chat? This was 99% brush work on this. And, you know, this is all our pro synthetic brushes. You know, so everything from the artsy fartsy backdrop to the model itself, you know, this is all done with our synthetics. And you've watched me do it live. So there's nothing they can't do basically. But again, the feel of a tool is as important as the cell sheet of the tool, right? So if you hear somebody talk, you hear me say, oh, pro synthetics, I use them all the time. It's the only thing I use. But if you get them and they don't feel right, then it's not the right tool. So we always suggest, you know, before diving in, you know, grab one, you know, we have the build your own brush set. So as soon as you buy four brushes, you get the same set discount. And uh, you can buy a couple of synthetics, a couple of sables, have a good set of brushes to try out. Um, and then once you find a brush that you really like, stick with that. Boom, go for it. I paint with a two and a four almost exclusively. I move, I, well, I, a two, four, and a six. Paint with a six a lot of the time. Um, and then the four is my go-to brush that I paint with like 99% of the time or 90% of the time. The two is my detail brush more often than not. I'll go to one zeros, double zeros, X tens, or like super tiny detail and freehanding stuff that I need to do. But yeah, that's generally the, the deal. Start saving up your hobby funds for these upcoming releases. I mean... Rance, it's like, hashtag take my money. Don't you still have product here? <laughs> Jen's like, yes. <laughs> Rance, it's like, I'm sorry. I'll come get my stuff. Rance is the best customer in the world. He buys stuff that he never expects to get. <laughs> there was a lot of blab time on that guy, yes. He thought it had something to do with their quality and how much paint it holds. Thanks. It used to, well, you know, so as humans do, we tend to take what used to be true and talk about it as if it's still true. And brushes adhere to the technical innovations that push for other industries. Um, believe it or not, uh, most, uh, um, um, I guess at the top of the list, are the aeronautics and space industry and the camping gear industries, right? Survival camping gear, things like that. Um, those use very high-tech synthetic fabrics for various things like heat dissipation and, and absorption, uh, bullet deflection, you name it, right? We have all sorts of, of technical applications for synthetic fibers. And out of that innovation that's constantly moving, we have not hit anywhere near where we can get with synthetic fibers. Um, as that moves along, we get these kind of table scraps of cool stuff that can't be used for the space shuttle or whatever, the space station, but holy hell, it makes an amazing brush. And so you, you know, you, you used to have synthetics that because a, a hair needs to have a taper to it that you weren't able to get like a nylon to taper correctly and hold that taper it would kind of start to dull off at the end as you used it and so eventually you have a blunt brush over the course of a day or two right so you'll see like the white nylon brushes i would recommend never buying those uh i i hate to to, to say that but it's just a horrible product it's it's the old synthetic it does not draw paint it does not release paint like you want to um if you're used to things like sables that have a more controlled um uh, painting capability with lower viscosity paints. If you're painting with thicker stuff like oils or acrylics on canvas out of a tube, any brush will work for you because those paints stick where you put them. So it doesn't matter what the brush is made of, really. I mean, it does to some extent because of flex and, and what you're trying to do with it. Um, but a cheaper brush will hold a lot of paint if the paint doesn't flow. Uh, what happens, though, is as we use uh, liquid acrylics on models, we get lower viscosity paints, things that approach the, the flow of water right? Which is zero viscosity. And so you look at, I think actually ether is the lowest viscosity, but anyway, water is not, but we talk about it like it is. So as things flow very quickly, like 
thin down acrylic paint that's water-based, then the brush really starts to show its capability to draw a lot of paint and then release it in a controlled way. You know, whenever we go with a brush, right? Do I have any paint on the palette? I don't think I do. Maybe a little bit. I haven't painted with paint on the palette. I've only been painting with these washes. So let's get a dark one here, right? So, you know, I, I can hold a, a drop of paint, right? There's a drop of paint. But when I start to paint with it, can the brush offload it evenly so that I can get a consistent width line, right? That's what we talk about when we talk about how a paint offload or how a brush offloads paint. Because some brushes, as soon as you flex them, bloop, will dump their entire boatload of paint out because it just starts to seep through the hair. The capillary action of the hairs doesn't work as well. And so, you know, what you want is to be able to control that by, I want a really thin line if I press lightly and I want to thicken it out when I press heavy and then I want to be able to go back to thin. And if you can do that, if your brush gives you that thin, thick, thin control, then it's a good brush, right? Um, and you need to be able to do it with thin paints. And all the, well, I won't say all, but most of the, you know, uh, high-end synthetics that you find out in the world, that's what drives them. And in, like ours are... If I were to want to make the same profit on our synthetic brushes, and this may be giving you too much business info, but if I wanted to profit as much for every synthetic brush I sold you, I would be having to price them higher than Sables. Right? Because the cost to make a very good synthetic like our Pro Synthetic line is greater than the cost to make a Sable brush. Until you get into larger brushes. Then Sables exponentially cost more. Right? But at that range where we are from like a number six to a number, you know, triple, 10 knot, zero, tiny brush, uh, the synthetic outweighs the cost, right? So it's, uh, which is pretty flabbergasting when you think about it. That's like, I think it's the first time I've ever known where, you know, synthetics would cost as much as natural hair. Got your stable pro synth brushes. Love it. Honestly, your stable brushes compete well against Windsor Newton 7 and DaVinci Sage, but way cheaper. Yeah, I mean, again, we all get the same stable. So, and when you're dealing with master brush makers, as long as they know their stuff, there's not a whole lot of variance. You know, it's, it's name, name brand. We're lesser known. So, nylon, more like camel hair brushes, am I right? <laughs> camel hair, <laughs> you know. Camel, I, I mean, I feel like camel hair and horse hair are used for things. <laughs> you know, like big paint brushes and stuff. Let's take a look at uh, Whip real quick before we get out of here, but it is quitting time. I said I was going to quit early, now I'm quitting late. How did this happen? How do these things happen? There's nothing there. So we're done. Nobody has posted anything in WIP. So we're finished. That was easy. Ta-da! <laughs> Ta-da! -ta -ta All right. I've had a lot of fun doing this today, though. I'm hoping that you guys got some, uh, some good perspective on what our wash line will be able to do for you along with our opaque paints. I'm thinking that uh, we got a really, really good solution going for you here. Have some fun, invigorate your models, and uh, and get it done quick, right? I mean, how, how long has it been since we've gotten this far on a model in like, you know, three hours of jibber-jabber on stream? So, they, oh, Cosmo. Yeah, Jen's over in the corner going, Cosmo, you finished Cosmo <laughs> with without any tricks in, in like four hours. So that's true. That's true. But it, uh, it's rare. Shh. Don't tell nobody. But guys and gals, thank you so much for hanging out, watching some paint dry with us. I hope you enjoyed and are looking forward to our new wash line uh, when it comes out later in March. And also the new colors, right? Because we have been showing you a lot of the new colors, such as burgundy and warm yellow right? and warm flesh. We didn't show you warm yellow today, but warm flesh. And we've got 12 new colors coming out at the end of this month. So stay tuned for those. Get excited. Uh, save your coffee money. Go without coffee for a few days so you can buy a set of paints. And uh, we will be back again tomorrow. Remember, we stream five days a week. So if you're new here and you have not hit that follow button, please do. Uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we stream from 12 noon Pacific till 2 p.m. And then Tuesdays and Thursdays, like today, we start at 2 p.m. Pacific and go till 5, like we did today. Uh, or 518, uh, <clears throat> if you con me into painting more. There you go. So uh, hit that follow button. Make sure to follow us on the store and on the Discord. Jen with the links in chat. Click those. Uh, next time you need some hobby products, please give us a try. I think you'll love our paints. We uh, are artists and hobbyists that uh, paint miniatures a lot, and uh, we build products that are built for painting miniatures, believe it or not. So that's what we do. Give them a try. You'll love them. You'll be a convert, one of us. And then join the Discord, 
uh, and you'll also be a convert. Join a thousand plus hobbyists that have a great time discussing everything from uh, ways to paint and 3D print to fart jokes and general banter. So uh, join our Discord server for all the latest updates on product and cool stuff going on around HQ. With that, we will see you tomorrow at lunch. Stick around. We'll find somebody to raid. We'll see you on the flip side. Adios, gang.